If you're new here, my name is Tabian and I go by Talent Tech across all social media platforms. I'm currently a senior security engineer with a focus in cloud threat detection engineering and I have been in this industry since I was 19 years old. I'm currently 27, I'll be 28 in May. So I'm getting a bit old, but I know just a little bit. I've been in the industry for eight or nine years, so I think I know a little bit about cybersecurity. Over the last year, I've decided to pursue more offensive security trainings so that I can become a well-rounded threat detection engineer. If you know anything about threat detection engineer, you know, understanding the attacker's mindset is just as important as being able to defend the environment that you're working in because essentially as a threat detection engineer your job is to craft threat detections that's going to identify those threat actors malicious behaviors so learning offensive security skills as a blue teamer will only help your career and they'll also even present career transition to where you can become an offensive security engineer so in my opinion there's really only great things that can come to your career if you learn offensive security skill sets. However, there is one problem that I did come across when I was looking for cloud offensive security training. They're not really affordable, especially if you don't have a job or a company that is willing to pay for your certifications or your training. If you're someone just starting off, you probably don't have two, three, four thousand dollars to pay for a training or a course. Well, I found something for you. It's a platform called Cloud Breach. And before I dive into talking about Cloud Breach, I just want to give you guys a disclaimer. I was not paid to make this video. These are my own thoughts. I'm going to be extremely transparent on what I thought about the course, the exam, the labs, everything. However, they did give me free access to the trainings, the course, and everything else on the platform. Okay, now that we have that disclaimer out of the way, I just want to say I was not too familiar with Cloud Breach until my friend Day Cyberwolves introduced me to them. At the time, I believe he was taking the Offensive Azure Security Professional Certification. And for me, I decided to opt out of not taking that because at the time, or even now, my background has always been in Linux, Mac OS, and AWS. Even in the current environment that I'm working in, it's all Linux, Mac OS, and AWS. So I didn't see the immediate value in taking that particular course or training at that time. However, I do urge you if you do have a Microsoft background or you are interested in Azure that you should take the Offensive Azure Security Professional Certification because from what I've heard, it's been extremely helpful. Now back to the AWS side of things. So about a year later, I saw that Cloud Breach was coming out with a breach in the AWS course that is accompanied by the certification which is called the Offensive AWS Security Professionals. And I must say guys, this is very intriguing on what is provided within this course. So here's a few things that this course will cover. Okay, so the breaching AWS labs provide a simulated environment in which a fictitious financial institution named 2Capital has its infrastructure hosted on the AWS platform. Within these labs, students can acquire knowledge by utilizing AWS specific attack methods, which encompasses tasks such as performing AWS reconnaissance, executing privilege, escalation strategies, and exploiting AWS services. Okay, so within all of that, or within that particular description of what this particular course is about, here are some of the course's content and some of the services that you will be utilizing within these labs. So you will be utilizing AWS reconnaissance, AWS phishing techniques, extracting secrets from secret managers, storages, and databases, intercepting sensitive data by utilizing simple notification services, aka SNS, abusing Kubernetes misconfigurations, which is pretty important because most companies right now are utilizing microservices to host most of their applications. I'm abusing container registry permissions. I'm laterally moving across AWS services. I'm utilizing Renter to get shell on AKS pods. Abuse misconfigured IAM permissions. Enumerate AWS identity center directory. Extracting and exploiting Lambda functions and exploiting misconfigured EC2 instance. And I can tell you guys from experiences, these are actually real world things that you will come across if you're working in an environment utilizing AWS for sure. By now, you're probably wondering what type of experience you need to be able to take this course, what type of computer you may need, or even how long is the access to those labs. So let's start off with number one. 
what type of experience you may need to take this training or this certification. Guys, you actually don't need a lot of experience within AWS or even the cloud. I would urge you at least to understand the foundational parts of AWS in order to take this class so it's not extremely hard for you. However, within this course, they do break down each service that you are going to be utilizing. They break it down so that you can understand it. They teach you how to attack the particular service and they're also going to teach you how you can defend that particular service. So in my opinion, having those three different topics on one particular service, I feel like it gives you a really solid foundation understanding how those particular services may work. So in my head, I believe beginners can take this course. Now, what type of computer you may need in order to take this course? Guys, you can utilize a Chromebook to take this class. You can probably get a $100 Chromebook and still be able to take this class because this class provides all the infrastructure for you. You don't have to download any software. You don't have to download any tools. You don't have to do any of those things because they're going to provide you with all the infrastructure and you have to access it via a browser, whether it's Safari, Google Chrome, Brave, Firefox, you name it, you'll be able to access this material in the infrastructure utilizing a browser. Now, how long do you have access to this course? They have two options where you can access the course for 30 days or even 60 days. For me, I was able to complete the course within four to five days. And this is more so because I have an extensive background within AWS. And even then with me taking uh, 45 days completed, it was more so because I was working and I didn't really have as much time to dedicate to it. But once I find dedicated, I realistically knocked it out within two to three days. Now, if you're someone that don't necessarily have an extensive background in AWS, you may potentially need the full 30 days to take this course. And if you're someone that just absolutely has no experience, you don't understand any AWS services, you don't understand AWS at all from a fundamental level, you may potentially need this 60 days to complete all of the labs. However, most people that I've talked with, it only took them 30 days to complete the lab acts. I mean, complete the labs. So 30 days should be more than enough in order for you to complete the labs and really understand the topics and the information that are going to be provided for these services. Now, let's go over the structure of these labs. If you're someone that's took security trainings before, you're probably used to the format where you're watching a ton of videos and answer a lot of multiple choice quizzes. With this course, that is not a thing. There's no video, there's no multiple choice questions. In fact, they don't even give you the answers on the PDF sheet that gives you the directions for the labs. However, they do give you access to the Discord community and which if you need help within any of the labs, they're very quick, they're very efficient on answering any of those questions. For me in particular, they probably got back within an hour and I've seen within Discord, they respond to people very quickly. So you don't have to worry about waiting two, three, four, five days in order for someone to get back to you. Now, by me telling you guys that there's no videos, there's no multiple choice quiz, you probably figured out by now that this is completely hands on and you will be in a terminal 100% of the time. So if you're someone that's not really familiar with Linux, the terminal or the AWS command line, I do urge you to at least learn the basic commands within Linux and within AWS command line because you are going to have to use them in order to perform any actions within this lab. And they're also going to provide you with the Python scripts that are going to be needed to perform some tasks within those labs. So you're going to have to learn how to execute Python scripts, which is extremely easy. But they do teach you how to execute some of those commands within those labs but again i still urge you to at least learn the basic fundamentals of linux and the aws command line so that you have a pretty good experience with the terminal and honestly as a security engineer or even a cloud engineer you need to be familiar with the linux command line anyways and aws command line because that's primarily what you're going to be working in so don't wait start on that right now what are the pros and cons of the cloud breach breaching aws course let's start off with the pros the labs are really 
really good. Even with my extensive knowledge of AWS, I was still able to learn a lot of cool things about some services that I probably had not worked with in the past. Number two, there's no quizzes. It's all hands-on. It's all practical. For me personally, I said I was not taking any more trainings or any more courses where I had to watch videos and answer multiple choice questions because I feel like I don't necessarily learn best like that. Me personally, I'm a doer. I have to put my hands on the keyboard. That is how I learn. That is how I always learned. And they provide that structure or that type of learning within this particular course. Now, some people may learn better with videos and using multiple choice, but I feel like actually putting your hands on the keyboard really makes you retain the information because instead of memorizing these answers, you're actually having to know this information to be able to put it into use with the real world scenarios. The Discord community. The Discord community is extremely helpful. Any question you have, they're gonna answer them. They provide up-to-date information regarding what's happening in the security news, whether it's by Azure, GCP, AWS, they're constantly updating you. So while you're learning these new skill sets from this course, you're also learning real world experiences based upon the updates that they are putting in the Discord community. It's an extremely active Discord community, so you're bound to learn something new within that community. Now, honestly, I only have one con, and that's the actual exam itself the labs in my opinion were harder than the exam and it could be because i have an extensive aws background but i felt like the exam could have been a little bit harder um, we get 24 hours to take the exam i know for me i waited until like two and a half hours was left to take the exam and i completed within like an hour and a half maybe two hours and that's what I mean actually really trying to pass it or talking to some of the people that did create the exam and they did get um, some feedback from other people saying that they felt like it was a bit easier. And from the last time I did speak with them, they did say they changed the format of the exam or not necessarily the format, but they did change some labs within the exam to make it a bit more difficult. Um, I haven't taken it since then, so I can't really tell you what it looks like now. But all in all, that's really the only con that I have within the exam. Um, the labs, extremely helpful. The labs are actually a bit harder than the exam itself. In essence, probably something you do want, I guess. You know, with the labs being pretty hard and the exam being pretty easy. Or maybe I was just really well prepared by the labs, which made it seem like the exam was easy. It could be either one, but either way, they did say they changed up some of the labs within the exam, so it may be a bit different. Now, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you found this review helpful, leave me a thumbs up. It helps out with the algorithm. Also, if there's anything else that you guys would like for me to review, leave a comment and I'll make sure to check it out. If you're interested in learning more about Cloud Breach and the Breach in the AWS course, I will link a link in the description and you can check them out there.